in H City, there's a monster causing chaos all around. It can make things explode with just a wave of its hand. Just when the monster is about to grab a crying little girl, Saitama swoops in at super fast speed and saves the day. The monster gets really angry and transforms into huge, scary creatures, growing to enormous size. But Saitama, with his incredible strength, defeats the monster with just one punch. When Saitama looks at the broken pieces of the monster, he doesn't feel happy. He actually kneels down and sadly cries out. Why is it always just one punch to take down these monsters? Three years ago, Saitama was just an ordinary dude with thick, luscious hair, struggling to find a job. One day, a weird crab monster showed up. Saitama, feeling down and hopeless, didn't even try to run away. But this crab monster wasn't interested in hurting him. It was actually looking for a kid with a butt on his face. Saitama couldn't believe that such a kid existed. And by chance, he actually found the boy with a butt on his face. Saitama was just an ordinary person and didn't want to get involved. He was about to walk away when suddenly, the crab monster attacked the boy. Without thinking, Saitama jumped in to protect the boy. The crab monster got really mad and told Saitama to move or they would all be killed. The crab monster awakened Saitama's fighting spirit, which had been dormant for a long time. He didn't want to be ordinary anymore. He wanted to be a hero. As the crab monster attacked him mercilessly, Saitama's sense of justice burned even brighter. He saw an opportunity, took action, and used his tie to blindfold the crab monster. Then, with a mighty tug, he pulled out a mouthful of crab meat. From that moment on, Saitama started intense training for three years. He became stronger but ended up bald. He became a bald, invincible force. With just one punch, he could defeat most enemies. But deep down, he felt emptiness. Being invincible was really lonely. The only thing that excited him now was supermarket sales. Whenever there was a sale, Saitama would rush over to do some serious shopping. One day, Saitama is at the supermarket, buying groceries. Suddenly, the ground starts shaking violently. A gigantic monster appears in the city. But Saitama just calmly counts his change, ignoring the chaos. Then, half of the supermarket gets smashed. And when Saitama looks outside, he sees a huge footprint. A giant has arrived. This giant was an ordinary person with a strong desire to become the strongest man in the world. So, his scientist brother developed a special potion that, when consumed, would grant him terrifying powers. Without hesitation, the younger brother gulped it down, and his body immediately emitted a green glow, transforming him into a fearsome giant. Back to the present. With his giant strength, the younger brother swings his right hand with all his might, creating a powerful shockwave that results in the deaths of tens of thousands of people. Saitama jumps onto the giant's body. The older brother tells the giant to get rid of Saitama, who is standing on his shoulder. But the giant gets confused and accidentally slaps his own brother, instantly killing him. Overwhelmed by seeing his dead brother, the giant directs his anger towards Saitama. He jumps high into the air and tries to crush Saitama. He throws a bunch of rapid punches, creating a huge hole in the ground. But to everyone's surprise, Saitama remains completely unharmed. He elegantly flies back up and effortlessly defeats the giant with just one punch. Darn it, once again, it's just a single punch that solves everything. As Saitama grows stronger, his emotions become more and more detached. Fear, joy, and other basic emotions slowly fade away from him. The overwhelming passion he once felt during battles also disappears because of his invincibility. He yearns for an opponent who can match his strength and awaken his fighting spirit. One day, Saitama hears on the news that there are mutated mosquitoes in the city. These mosquitoes can suck all the blood from a cow very quickly. They're really dangerous, so people need to find shelter if they see a swarm of mosquitoes. When Saitama hears this, he comes across a mosquito himself. He realizes that he, the unbeatable hero, can't even squash this tiny mosquito. This makes him really determined to defeat it and prove himself. On the other side, a large group of mosquitoes has already arrived in Z-City. The government issues a warning, urging residents to go home and take shelter. However, some people don't listen and take advantage of the empty streets to engage in robbery. They happen to encounter the mosquito swarm and end up being sucked dry, turning into lifeless husks. The reason these tiny mosquitoes have become so powerful is because there is a mysterious person manipulating them. Their controller is the mosquito girl. Just when she lets her guard down, a cyborg named Genos arrives at the scene. He sets all the mosquitoes on fire, burning them to ashes and engaging in a battle with the mosquito girl. She cuts off one of Genos' arms, but he fights back by cutting off her legs. 
The mosquito girl summons a swarm of mosquitoes to support herself. At that moment, Saitama rushes in with insecticide in hand. He hasn't caught the mosquito that's been bothering him at home yet. He catches up to Genos and, as he looks up, sees the enormous swarm of mosquitoes, which startles him. Genos advises the bald man who can't even deal with mosquitoes to run for his life. Meanwhile, the mosquito girl has completed her energy buildup and undergoes another evolution, becoming even stronger. She commands the swarm of mosquitoes to attack, but Genos unleashes an electrical blast that incinerates the entire city of mosquitoes, inadvertently burning Saitama's clothes as well. The mosquito army is wiped out. After evolving, mosquito girl's fighting power is greatly enhanced. Genos is no match for her, and soon his body becomes battered and broken under her attacks. In a desperate move, Genos activates his self-destruct mechanism, intending to explode together with Mosquito Girl as a last resort to stop her. Before he detonates, Saitama slaps Mosquito Girl away, turning her into a pool of mosquito blood. Genos is left astonished and completely convinced by Saitama's power. He silently vows to become Saitama's disciple. He visits Saitama's home with his body fully restored. Being a cyborg, he can easily replace his lost limbs and regenerate. He tells Saitama about his past when he was a regular human. One day, a mad cyborg attacked their city and killed his whole family. Luckily, a doctor passing by saved him. He asked the doctor to turn him into a cyborg to seek revenge on the cyborg that caused the tragedy. But even after fighting evil for four years, he still hasn't found any clues about the mad cyborg. Saitama listens to Geno's talk on and on, and it's giving him a headache. Unable to bear it any longer, Saitama reluctantly accepts him as his disciple. At that moment, Genos senses something approaching. A large green praying mantis suddenly descends from the sky and jumps into the house. However, in the next second, Saitama punches it and shatters it into pieces. There are two more monsters outside, but before Genos can react, Saitama swiftly defeats both of them. Suddenly, a pair of sharp claws pull Saitama underground, and it turns out there's a lion king hiding in the dirt. However, Saitama finds it boring and lets out a yawn. He lazily walks out of the hole and playfully interacts with the Lion King for a while before finishing it off with one punch. The mole monster realizes things aren't looking good and tries to escape underground, but it accidentally bumps into Saitama's big face and gets instantly defeated. On the other side, Genos has already defeated the armored gorilla, who is now kneeling and begging for mercy, revealing the mastermind behind all this. He tells the story of Dr. Genus a brilliant young scientist who made many remarkable contributions to society. He wanted to achieve the next evolution of humanity, so he embarked on research that lasted several decades. By the time he reached 70 years old, he finally achieved his ideal results. He transformed back into a young person and eventually discovered the secret to immortality, creating multiple clones of himself. He then wanted to establish a world of evolution. He created entirely new species like the armored gorilla. Dr. Genus took an interest in Saitama's body and wanted to get him for research purposes. Genos asks Saitama when they should go find Dr. Genus, and Saitama decides they should go today because there's a big sale at the supermarket the next day, and he wants to go shopping. The armored gorilla overhears their conversation and quickly reports to Dr. Genus. Upon receiving the news, Dr. Genus becomes terrified. Saitama and Genos sprint all the way and arrive at the entrance of the research facility. They look up and see that it has multiple floors. Too lazy to climb the stairs, Genos unleashes a powerful shockwave, leveling the entire building. The entrance to the underground base is exposed right in front of them. In the basement, Dr. Genus is left with no choice but to release Carnage Kabuto. Dr. Genus shows Carnage Kabuto a picture of Saitama and points to Saitama, who's busy picking his nose. He says, this guy is incredibly powerful, and only you can handle him. When Carnage Kabuto hears this, he says, then I must meet him. Carnage Kabuto grabs Dr. Genus and rushes off to find Saitama. When they finally come face to face, Carnage Kabuto punches Genos with one mighty fist. Then, he invites Saitama to a duel in the fighting arena. As the two arrive at the arena, Genos catches up and launches a barrage of attacks against Carnage Kabuto. Flames, machine guns, and a flurry of punches, he throws everything at him, but still gets sent flying by Carnage Kabuto. Even the flames bounce back and turn Geno's hair into popcorn. It looks like it's Saitama's turn to step in. The duel finally begins in earnest. Carnage Kabuto strikes first, flying around Saitama. But Saitama's mere gaze frightens him. He quickly retreats a hundred meters, sweating a lot and leaning against the wall. 
Saitama is puzzled, wondering why Carnage Kabuto is so scared. Poor Carnage Kabuto is still shaken up with fear. In his eyes, Saitama seems to have many weak spots, but deep down, his instincts tell him that there's a dangerous secret hidden within. Desperate to know why Saitama is so unbelievably powerful, Carnage Kabuto musters up the courage to ask him. Saitama doesn't hold back and honestly shares his secret to success. He explains that it all boils down to hard training, enduring three years of storms and tough times. Every single day, he does 100 push-ups, sit-ups, and squats, and runs 10 kilometers. Saitama also stresses the importance of a healthy diet and enduring all seasons without using air conditioning, even if it means losing his hair. That's how he became even more powerful. The others are left totally confused by what they hear. They can't believe that such incredible power comes from just regular exercise. They're like, how is that even possible? Carnage Kabuto, feeling annoyed by Saitama's casual attitude, gets angry. He activates his carnage mode and starts attacking Saitama. Saitama realized that the big store discount was happening that day instead of the next. So, with ease, Saitama defeats Carnage Kabuto and then goes off with Genos to catch all the amazing deals on discount day. After witnessing this, Dr. Genus gives up on his plans for artificial evolution and realizes that he's the one who needs to make a change. One day, a group of bald guys is passionately giving speeches on the street, questioning why people have to work and why they have to pay for food. They suggest that everyone should just share everything. They feel trapped by their jobs every day and believe that freedom is just a silly concept. They unite and decide to change the world together. They talk and talk, but no one pays any attention to them. They have to take matters into their own hands. They chant slogans and prepare to demolish the mansion of the city's richest person, Zanairu. They believe such a fancy building must have been constructed with ill-gotten money. Armed with stolen equipment, they throw a punch and bring down the whole building. However, they soon realize they've got the wrong target. Their leader, Hammerhead, tries to act calm and waves his hand to signal the gang to continue. Meanwhile, Saitama has just woken up. He hears the news reporting that a group of bald guys is causing chaos in the city. Saitama's face turns black upon hearing this because he is bald too. They are ruining his reputation. Saitama grumbles and prepares to go and deal with them. The bald guys are in a standoff with the police, wearing their mechanical armor that makes them invincible against ordinary people. At that moment, the C-class hero, Muman Rider, arrives on his bicycle. He bravely confronts the gang of bald guys, and the crowd cheers for him. However, with a single punch, he is knocked down. Zanairu, the richest person, sees that the bald guy's target is him, and he becomes worried. He hires his own bodyguard named Speedo Sound Sonic to protect him from Hammerhead and his gang. Sonic approaches Hammerhead and advises them to surrender and be reasonable. This angers Hammerhead, who commands his followers to attack. But Sonic is lightning fast, swiftly defeating them one by one. Hammerhead picks up a large stone and tries to smash Sonic, but Sonic easily evades the attack. Hammerhead blocks Sonic's movements using stones, creating a narrow path. Sonic smirks and decides to show Hammerhead what true speed is all about. His speed is so fast that Hammerhead can't even see where he is. Panicking, Hammerhead changes his strategy and grabs a big tree, swinging it at Sonic. He believes he has completely blocked Sonic's path. But in the next second, a dart flies and hits Hammerhead in the back of his head. It turns out Sonic had already circled behind him. Sonic reports to Zanira that the mission is complete. To his surprise, Hammerhead's body disappears in an instant. Hammerhead, even with the dart sticking out of him, manages to run away. On his way, Hammerhead encounters Saitama. Both of them are bald, so Hammerhead assumes Saitama wants to join their gang. But to his astonishment, Saitama actually wants to defeat him. Hammerhead throws a heavy punch at Saitama, but to no avail. Saitama remains completely unscathed. Hammerhead is furious and decides to show Saitama his true power. He unleashes his ultimate move. Saitama thinks this bald guy kinda reminds him of his own childhood, so he decides to cut him some slack. Saitama grabs Hammerhead's hand and delivers a gentle elbow strike, shattering his battle outfit. Hammerhead, now naked and defenseless, quickly surrenders and begs for mercy, claiming that he simply didn't want to work and that his crime doesn't deserve death. Saitama, being the kind-hearted hero he is, 
grants him mercy, and Hammerhead immediately starts running away frantically while completely naked. As Saitama is about to leave, Sonic suddenly appears and sees his shiny bald head. Mistaking him for Hammerhead's ally Saitama explains that he is a hero who fights for justice, but Sonic doesn't recognize him at all. It seems that Saitama's fame is still too low among the general public. Sonic swiftly circles around Saitama, believing that his speed is unmatched. However, Saitama sees through his moves effortlessly, calmly evading his attacks. Then, Saitama accidentally punches him in the crotch. Sonic withstands the pain and threatens that the next time they meet, it will be Saitama's death. Saitama feels sorry for Sonic and cheers him on. That night, a serious question troubles Saitama. He has been a part-time hero for three years, diligently defeating countless monsters. Despite his heroic deeds, he wonders why no one recognizes him. Genos figures out the reason and asks Saitama if he has registered with the Hero Association. To become a recognized hero, one needs to take an examination at the Hero Association. Otherwise, they will be considered a weirdo. Saitama never imagined that becoming a hero would be so troublesome. Genos also hasn't registered yet, and they decide to go together to apply. Inside the headquarters of the Hero Association, the staff is discussing the evaluation of heroes. This year, the number of applicants has exceeded 10,000, raising concerns about the quality of heroes. They decide to increase the difficulty of the test. However, for Saitama, it's still a piece of cake. Everyone is waiting to see him fail. But the next moment, they are left dumbfounded. During the agility tests, Saitama's speed is so fast that it becomes a blur. While others are just starting, he has already completed several laps. During the weightlifting tests, he effortlessly lifts dumbbells weighing several tons and throws the shot put, piercing through the roof. Soon, the test results are out. Genos receives a perfect score and is ranked as an S-class hero. Saitama opens his scorecard, seeing only half of an S visible, and breathes a sigh of relief. However, the rest of the grade turns out to be a C. Despite breaking all the records in physical tests, he can only receive a maximum of 50 points, and his written exam score is 21, resulting in a total score of 71, barely making him a low-ranking C-class hero. They gather in the meeting room where an elder explains the code of hero conduct. Saitama, casually chewing gum, pays little attention. The senior hero, Snack, is assigned as their teacher, and he's really annoyed by Saitama's inappropriate behavior. On the way home, Genos tells Saitama about the origin of the Hero Association. Three years ago, the grandson of the city's wealthiest man was attacked by a monster but was saved by a passerby. Grateful, the wealthy man invested all his fortune to establish the Hero Association to help more people. After parting ways with Genos, Saitama walks alone on the road when Snek intercepts him. Snek decides to teach Saitama a lesson because of his attitude in class. It sounds like a good idea, but reality is cruel and painful. The next day, Saitama and Genos go for outdoor training. Genos still doesn't believe in Saitama's secret training strategy, and thinks there might be another secret even Saitama himself doesn't know. Genos tries to force out Saitama's true strength by using his ultimate move, but compared to Genos going all out, Saitama can't be any more relaxed. No matter how much Genos improves his speed or uses laser cannons, he can't even scratch Saitama's clothes. Now it's Genos who's unhappy, wondering why Saitama doesn't fight back. Seeing Genos so serious, Saitama clenches his fist and makes a serious face, ready to strike at Genos. Suddenly, the fist stops. With just the airflow caused by the punch, it creates a massive gap in the canyon. If it had hit Genos' face, he would probably need hundreds of plastic surgeries to look like himself again. Genos watches Saitama's back and realizes that their abilities are on completely different levels. After finishing their training, they go to a noodle shop for a meal and notice a 50,000 yen bounty challenge for a champion eater. Although Genos can't match Saitama's strength, as a cyborg, he has a tremendous advantage when it comes to eating. In the end, both of them successfully complete the challenge. Sweet Mask, the top-ranked Class A hero, suddenly appears and congratulates Genos and welcomes him to the team. Although Saitama doesn't know why Sweet Mask made this visit, he's envious of Sweet Mask's immense popularity. That night, Genos brings all his belongings and moves into Saitama's house. Saitama refuses at first, but Genos doesn't take no for an answer and starts throwing money around. Poor hero Saitama reluctantly accepts Genos as his roommate. In the blink of an eye, five days have passed since Saitama became a professional hero. While he leisurely reads manga, 
Genos gives him some bad news. If a C-class hero doesn't eliminate evil within a week, they will be expelled from the association. Although C-class heroes aren't very powerful and deal with petty criminals like thieves, robbers, and murderers, their large numbers make the competition fierce. If they set off late, there won't be any thieves left. Saitama is thunderstruck after hearing this. It's been five days since the week began, and he only has two days left. Time is running out. He quickly puts on his clothes and dashes through the streets and alleys. After a whole day of searching, his eyes are almost blinded, but he hasn't found a single bad guy. The town is just too peaceful. Saitama sighs in frustration and decides to try again tomorrow. However, the next day, the city is still annoyingly peaceful. It's his last day to avoid getting laid off, and Saitama is getting anxious when suddenly, Sonic appears. He has healed from his injuries and has come to seek revenge on Saitama. But before Sonic can finish his threats, Saitama interrupts him, saying he's busy looking for bad guys and doesn't have time for Sonic's whining. Sonic instantly gets furious and swings his sword at him. To everyone's surprise, Saitama bites the sword and shatters it with his teeth. Sonic is left dumbfounded. At that moment, C-class hero Tank Top Tiger shows up. He received a report that this bald guy was acting suspiciously yesterday and is back today. Saitama gets angry because he's actually trying to do good deeds. Sonic finds him annoying and throws his sword at Tank Top Tiger, forcing him to retreat. To provoke Saitama into fighting him, Sonic starts causing destruction all over the city. Saitama suddenly realizes that Sonic is a ready-made achievement for him. He punches Sonic, completes his task, and sends Sonic straight to prison. Meanwhile, on the other side of City Z, a wet and slimy Kombu Infinity quietly lands. At the headquarters of the A-City Hero Association, the high-ranking officials are reviewing investigation reports submitted from various bases. The hero responsible for Q-City, Watchdog Man, reports no abnormalities. Watchdog Man is an S-class hero who looks and behaves like a dog and is always silent. Reports from W-City, H-City, D-City, and B-City also show no abnormalities. Only City Z failed to submit the report on time. Someone reported that a dangerous monster is lurking in City Z. The headquarters decides to send two A-class heroes, Golden Ball and Spring Mustacho, to the area. They arrive in the desolate outskirts of City Z, which has become a ghost town due to frequent monster appearances. Rent here is dirt cheap, making it suitable for bold people with little money, like Saitama. As the two heroes stop on the road, a dark shadow flashes behind them. They quickly give chase and encounter Kombu Infinity. They meet in an alley, and Golden Ball immediately attacks, shooting powerful Golden Balls. However, Kombu Infinity effortlessly deflects them, leaving only minor scratches. Kombu Infinity counterattacks, slamming Golden Ball against the wall, causing him to faint. Spring Mustacho transforms his handkerchief into a sword and engages in a skilled sword fight. While he appears composed, he secretly sends a distress signal for help. The headquarters receives the message and sends out a distress signal. Hearing the news, other heroes are eager to join the fight. Just as Kombu Infinity is about to leave after defeating his opponents, he runs into Saitama, who has just returned from grocery shopping. Without hesitation, he tries to attack Saitama, only to end up in Saitama's pot of fresh Kombu soup. The heroes arrive late for the rescue, only to find a demolished building at the scene. They see the half-drowned seaweed and conclude that an even stronger monster is lurking here. From then on, whenever City Z is mentioned, both humans and monsters feel fear. One day, the Hero Association's headquarters detects a giant meteorite deviating from its path, set to crash into Z City in 35 minutes. It's a disaster that could wipe out the entire city. They quickly summon nearby S-class heroes for support. Only Genos and the third-ranked S-class hero, Bang, show up. The other heroes are too scared and run away. Bang tells Genos to leave and save himself, but Genos refuses. He knows that if the meteorite hits, not only Z City but all the nearby cities will be destroyed, and the people won't have time to escape. Plus, Genos's idol, Saitama, is still in the city. Just when things seem hopeless, a hero called Metal Knight, who is ranked 7th in the S-Class, arrives to test a new weapon against the meteorite. However, he doesn't want to work together with another hero to stop the crisis. He thinks he can do it alone. But unfortunately, his fancy weapons are not able to stop the meteorite from falling. With only 33 seconds left, Genos decides to use his most powerful attack, the incineration cannon, to stop the meteorite. He worries it might not work, but Bang encourages him to trust his instincts and not overthink. 
Genos gathers all his energy and fires at the meteorite, but it only slows it down. As the meteorite is about to crash, Saitama appears out of nowhere. Saitama asks Bang to take care of Genos and then jumps into the air, delivering a powerful punch to the meteorite. It shatters into pieces and causes a lot of damage, but it's much better than if it had hit the city directly. Because of their heroic efforts, their rankings in the Hero Association go up. Saitama's ranking skyrockets from the 342nd position in C-Class to the 5th position in C-Class. One day, Saitama goes out alone, hoping to find something to do. He unexpectedly bumps into Tanktop Tiger and his brother, Tanktop Black Hole. The Tanktop brothers are jealous of Saitama's rising rank and want to teach him a lesson. Tanktop Black Hole loudly exclaims, It's you who has been causing all this destruction in the city! He gathers a group of angry citizens who blame Saitama for the damage. They ignore the fact that Saitama actually saved everyone by destroying the meteor. Even on the internet, there are people angrily criticizing him, thinking he's the one who destroyed the city. They don't understand that without Saitama, the city would have been destroyed by the meteor. The tank top brothers, acting all righteous, approach Saitama with anger. Tiger tries to attack him but gets knocked back by a single punch from Saitama. Black Hole follows suit, but he can't even hurt Saitama in the slightest. Finally, Saitama can't take it anymore. He yells out that he did nothing wrong and explains that he's a hero because he enjoys it, not for their admiration. He tells them they can hate him all they want because he doesn't care about their opinions. Just as Saitama is speaking his mind, Genos arrives and interrupts him. In Genos's eyes, there's no one more excellent than Saitama. Saitama doesn't need to argue with those people. Even if society doesn't recognize him, Genos will always follow him. On that day, a giant seafolk monster appears in the city, declaring its intention to rule over humanity. But it encounters Saitama right away and quickly regrets its decision. Because of this encounter, Saitama's rank rises to the second position in the C-Class. However, more seafolk monsters begin appearing in other cities, arrogantly proclaiming their desire to rule over humans. Stinger, a hero ranked 11th in the A-Class, takes the lead and fights against various seafolk monsters using a weapon that looks like a long spear. Although outnumbered, Stinger is confident in handling these creatures. In no time, he takes out the last four seafolk with a powerful attack called the Gigantic Drill Stinger Quadruple Thrust. But the Sea King, the leader of the seafolk, grabs hold of Stinger. When Saitama and his disciple, Genos, receive the news, they rush to the rescue. Genos thinking Saitama is too slow, runs to rescue first. In the Hero Association, disasters are classified into different levels based on their danger. The Tiger level represents a crisis that threatens many lives. The Demon level signifies a crisis that can stop a city or cause its destruction. The Dragon level refers to a crisis that can destroy multiple cities, and the God level represents a crisis that could wipe out humanity. The Disaster level rises from Tiger to Demon, causing C-Class heroes to evacuate. However, Muman Rider, also a C-Class hero, goes against the flow and decides to stop the Sea King. Meanwhile, other heroes arrive to support. One of them is Lightning Max, who underestimates the Sea King's power and gets knocked away with a single blow. Luckily, the lowest-ranked S-Class hero, Puri Puri Prisoner, arrives just in time to catch him. Puri Puri Prisoner looks tough on the outside but has a kind heart inside, always wanting to protect handsome guys from harm. Sonic who manages to escape from prison, decides to confront the Sea King. Sonic is incredibly fast and can predict the Sea King's moves. He effortlessly dodges his attacks and occasionally counterattacks. Sonic is impressed with his own skills, thinking he's the strongest. However, his happiness doesn't last long as it starts raining heavily, causing the Sea King's speed, strength, and size to increase dramatically. It turns out the Sea King is an aquatic creature, and the rain rejuvenates him bringing him back to his full power. Sonic realizes he can't defeat him barehanded and retreats for now. The Sea King becomes even more arrogant, trying to get to the human shelter and preparing to go on a rampage. Inside the shelter, there are only ordinary citizens and a few C-Class heroes. Despite the vast difference in strength, the heroes step up to protect the people. However, the reality is harsh. Meanwhile, Saitama, who runs slowly, meets Muman Rider, and they hitch a ride together. Seeing the lives of the citizens in imminent danger, Genos arrives just in time. He launches a powerful strike, sending the Sea King flying and creating a massive crater. The crowd cheers, but suddenly, the Sea King reappears next to Genos, tearing his arm off and smashing him into a wall. Later, Muman Rider and Saitama separate, 
with Mumin Rider desperately cycling toward the shelter. Genos, despite his injuries, urges the citizens to escape and engages in a fierce battle with the monster. He uses flame cannons, lightning eyes, and even a heavy machine gun, but nothing seems to work. In a moment of stalemate, the Sea King spits corrosive saliva toward a girl in the crowd. Genos swiftly teleports in front of her, getting drenched in the disgusting saliva. The Sea King's saliva is as corrosive as sulfuric acid, and within seconds, Genos is melted down to a skeleton, losing his fighting capabilities. Seizing the opportunity, the Sea King advances to finish off Genos when a bicycle comes crashing down onto him. It's Mumin Rider. The Sea King looks at the weakling in front of him and just can't get interested. With just one hand, he toys with Mumin Rider. Although Mumin Rider is very weak in terms of fighting ability, he possesses a strong spirit. With his never give up attitude, he keeps getting up time and time again. He knows he is small and weak, but since he became a hero, there's no turning back. For the sake of justice, he charges forward without hesitation. His words touch the hearts of the crowd, and their morale suddenly soars. Mumin Rider gathers all his strength and launches an attack against the Sea King. The Sea King knocks him down again. Just then, Saitama arrives and catches Mumin Rider. Saitama puts him down and boldly declares that he will turn the Sea King into fish paste. The Sea King listens and punches Saitama in the head, but to his surprise, it has no effect at all. The Sea King suddenly starts introducing himself, claiming to be the invincible Sea King, the apex predator. Saitama taps his ear, finding the Sea King's speech annoying, and tells him to shut up because he's in a hurry to go home and do laundry. The Sea King gets furious and throws a powerful punch at Saitama, but Saitama defeats him with a single punch. The onlookers are astonished by what they see. Someone starts badmouthing the other heroes, saying even a C-class hero like Saitama can easily defeat the Sea King. It seems the Sea King isn't that formidable after all. The previous heroes, like the A-class and S-class ones, were just a bunch of weaklings who didn't live up to their names. However, some people understand and defend the other heroes. Hearing the argument, Saitama mutters to himself, saying that it's thanks to the other heroes exhausting the Sea King's strength that he was able to defeat him easily. Timing is everything, and he just happened to pick up the credit. Saitama then playfully boasts that everything is because of his own efforts. The crowd then turns their anger towards Saitama, saying this bald guy rose to his position by cheating. Upon reflection, they realize that the other heroes are more deserving of praise, especially those who sacrificed themselves earlier. Genos, witnessing Saitama being criticized, feels heartbroken but understands that this is the path Saitama has chosen. Later, Saitama and Genos receive a large box of letters. These are thank you letters sent by their fans after defeating the Sea King. Most of them are addressed to Genos, while Saitama only has two letters. One of them is a hateful letter calling him a cheat. The other is a heartfelt thank you letter, which surprises Saitama. The Hero Association also sends a letter to Saitama, informing him that his rank has been upgraded to first place in the C-Class, and he is eligible for promotion to the B-Class. Excited, Saitama goes to the headquarters and agrees to be promoted to the B-Class. Holding his freshly issued B-Class certificate, he feels happy. On his way home, he sees a street vendor selling snacks and suddenly feels hungry. Someone offers to treat him to dinner. He looks at the person and realizes it's Mumin Rider, a hero he encountered before. Mumin Rider reveals that he was the one who sent the thank you letter and insists on paying for Saitama's dinner. After the defeat of the Sea Folk Monsters, the King of Dinosaurs takes over their mission to conquer the world and plans to attack the city. But before he even reaches the city, he encounters Tatsumaki, the second-ranked S-Class hero. Tatsumaki has the ability to float in the air with green aura surrounding her. She summons meteorites from outer space and smashes the king of dinosaurs into a skeleton. Meanwhile, Genos and Saitama visit Bang's house, where Bang tells them about his former top student, Garu, who went out of control and defeated all his other students. Suddenly, a staff member from the Hero Association arrives and informs them that an emergency has been declared and all S-Class heroes must attend a meeting. All the S-Class heroes gather for the meeting. It seems like a big deal this time. Saitama, with nothing better to do, decides to join in the excitement. They arrive at the Hero Association headquarters, where they meet Atomic Samurai, an S-Class hero who only respects the strong and refuses to shake hands with Saitama. They also see Tatsumaki, who is ranked second in the S-Class. The meeting is about to begin, and the 17 S-Class heroes take their seats creating a sense of pressure. All the S-Class heroes are present, 
except for Blast, the top-ranked S-class hero who never shows up. Saitama, ranked 63rd in the B-class also joins the meeting. The association's leader, Sitch, finally arrives. He sadly informs everyone that the great seer, Madame Shibabawa, has passed away. The news shocks everyone because Shibabawa was a true prophet who could accurately predict the arrival of monsters. Her final words were that the earth was in trouble, and the disaster will happen within six months. That is maybe it will happen today, or it could happen tomorrow. Suddenly, the headquarters building is attacked. The Sky King leads his henchmen with ambitious intentions to take over the surface. However, before they can make a move, they are instantly wiped out. The Sky King is cleaved in half, and another monster named Melzergard appears. Behind him is a massive alien spaceship, and as the engines start, the entire A city is destroyed. The heroes quickly mobilize to investigate the situation. Saitama reaches the rooftop and sees the spaceship. He plans to go inside and check it out when a wave of missiles suddenly comes towards him. Saitama dodges and kicks the missiles back towards the spaceship. Meanwhile, the multi-headed monster Melzergard has an ability to instantly regenerate, no matter how it's attacked. Bang, Metal Bat, and Puri Puri Prisoner join the battle and unleash a flurry of attacks on Melzergard. While some heroes are on the rooftop discussing how to approach the spaceship, Saitama is already inside, nearly annihilating the alien creatures. He encounters Garibas, another alien, and defeats him with a single punch. Saitama continues to wreak havoc on the spaceship, damaging it extensively. Saitama is curious about who's in charge of the spaceship. Little does he know, the cosmic overlord Boros is waiting for him. Inside the command room, an alien named Jerry Jürgenship watches Saitama wreak havoc on the screen and can't help but let out some alien curse words. Boros, getting restless, orders Jerry Jürgenship and two other top warriors to take out their opponent. Jerry Jürgenship sweats nervously because Saitama has already defeated one top warrior named Garibas, while the other, Melzergard, is still battling heroes on the ground. Melzergard gets smashed into rubble by Puri Puri Prisoner, but he doesn't seem to care at all. His super-fast healing powers make him instantly recover, and he punches Puri Puri Prisoner. Bang quickly jumps in, blocking the attack and sending Melzergard flying. Melzergard realizes that his enemies are tough, so he decides to call the spaceship for a ground bombardment. The heroes fight side by side, charging forward and working together. One swings a sword while another throws a punch. The scene is filled with dazzling swordplay and fast punches. No matter how many times the monster regenerates, the heroes keep smashing it. Suddenly, Metal Bat notices a marble. Melzergard panics when he sees the marble land in Metal Bat's hand. It seems the marble holds a secret. Metal Bat swings his bat with all his might, shattering the marble into powder, and one of the monster's clones disappears with it. The heroes figure out the trick and feel more confident. If they find and crush all the marbles, they can defeat Melzergard. Meanwhile, on the spaceship, Jerry Jürgenship contacts Saitama using telepathy and warns him to retreat. Saitama innocently claims he's lost and can't find a way out even if he wants to leave. Jerry Jürgenship finally breathes a sigh of relief and points out the exit, suggesting Saitama turns right. But Saitama's expression turns wicked as he turns left instead. Jerry Jürgenship becomes completely flustered. With no other choice, Jerry Jürgenship reveals his true form and confronts Saitama. He boasts about being the universe's top telekinetic master, who can control attacks with his mind. He tries throwing rocks at Saitama with his mind, but it doesn't affect him at all. Jerry Jürgenship gets furious and uses his mind to control gravity, trying to stop Saitama in his tracks. But Saitama is even more powerful than a black hole, and Jerry Jürgenship's attacks can't touch him. Saitama mocks him, saying he only knows how to throw pebbles. Saitama throws a pebble at him that Jerry Jürgenship's head splits open. Saitama interrogates one of the minor monsters to find out where the spaceship's leader is. Meanwhile, the spaceship starts bombarding the ground with countless missiles. Tatsumaki stops the missiles in midair and sends them back to the spaceship, causing a massive explosion. Melzergard gets really angry and his two arms turn into countless tentacles, attacking the heroes. Metal Bat hits the tentacles, while Puri Puri Prisoner grabs and restrains them. Bang takes the opportunity to jump up and smash the monster's head, finding the marble, and crushes it between his fingers. Bang lets his guard down for a moment and gets sent flying a hundred meters by Melzergard ultimately embedded in a stone, losing consciousness. Now, Melzergard only has one marble left. If it gets crushed, the heroes will win. On the other side, on the spaceship, Saitama finally encounters Boros. 
With just one glance, Boros realizes that Saitama is hiding tremendous power. Saitama questions Boros about his true motives. Boros explains that he came here because of a prophecy. After conquering the universe, he couldn't find a worthy opponent and got bored. An oracle told him that there's someone on earth who can fight him, so he came here to have some fun and experience the long-lost thrill. Saitama punches him, giving him the thrill he's been missing. Saitama tells Boros that being bored is no excuse to invade other planets, and that his way of thinking is flawed. Boros's armor shatters, revealing that it was suppressing his immense power. Once broken, his power is fully restored. Boros undergoes a transformation, his body becoming colorful, surrounded by sparks and fluorescent lights. He charges at Saitama. Saitama, with a deadpan expression, remarks that Boros looks quite intimidating. They engage in a chase, with Boros maintaining the upper hand. Finally, Saitama throws a punch. It ends with Boros losing an arm. Boros clearly didn't expect to encounter someone so powerful on Earth. On the ground, tank top master, an S-class hero, lifts a building with one hand and uses it as a projectile to attack the spaceship. However, compared to Tatsumaki, who ranks second, his efforts fall short. Tatsumaki manipulates numerous buildings, continuously hurling them at the spaceship. From a distance, it looks like a dazzling fireworks display. After the fight, Drive Knight leaves after telling Genos that Metal Knight is his enemy. Melzergard remains relentless. Atomic Samurai swings his long sword, engaging in a fierce battle. At this moment, Bang, who was knocked out earlier, joins the fight, surprising Melzergard. Taking advantage of his surprise, Atomic Samurai attacks from behind, using his ultimate technique to slice Melzergard into pieces. Before Melzergard can recover, Bang strikes his core marble with a powerful palm strike, crushing the last marble and defeating Melzergard. Meanwhile, Saitama and Boros begin their second round. On one side, we have Boros, who wants to be the ruler of the entire universe and thinks he's unbeatable. And on the other side, we have Saitama, a super talented hero who can defeat anyone with just one punch. Boros says he and his kind come from a really tough planet, so they can regenerate really fast. Boros is the strongest of them all. Saitama finds it annoying and thinks there's too much talking. This really annoys Boros, so he uses his ultimate move called the Meteoric Burst. When Saitama finally realizes what's going on, he finds himself on the moon. He decides to have a little fun and plays with some moon rocks. But then he looks at his beautiful blue home, Earth and with a mighty leap, he jumps back down. Boros is completely shocked. He never expected Saitama to be this strong. Even though using all his power will take a toll on his life, Boros still gives it everything he's got and charges at Saitama. But this time, Saitama doesn't let him overpower him. He throws a second punch. Boros's eyes start to turn red, and he spits out a mouthful of blood. Saitama doesn't give him a chance to catch his breath and starts landing a series of punches. He pounds Boros until he becomes a puddle of blood. Although Boros has ability to regenerate, it's a life or death situation for him. Boros risks his life and unleashes his ultimate move, which can destroy the whole earth if not stopped. Saitama is forced to use his ultimate move for the first time, the serious punch. This punch is so powerful that it sends shivers through the earth. Boros is defeated again. He lies on the ground with his body battered and broken. He musters his last bit of strength and asks if he lost. Saitama doesn't answer but admires Boros for being strong. Boros realizes that Saitama didn't even use his full power. With Boros's defeat, the entire spaceship crumbles to pieces. Just then, Sweet Mask arrives, but he's upset to see the city in ruins. He questions the S-Class heroes, saying they dare call it a victory after such a devastating cost. He finds their incompetence unbearable and suggests they quit early. This stinging comment sparks an argument, and Metal Bad is about to lose control and start fighting. But suddenly, a metal warehouse drops from the sky, and it's Metal Knight who arrives. He completely ignores the situation and focuses on collecting alien technology and the remains of the spaceship. Genos remembers that his teacher is still inside the spaceship. Tatsumaki, standing in front of the ship, seems lost in thought. After a loud crash, Saitama bursts through the wall. He pays no attention to Tatsumaki's surprise and meets up with Genos. He casually remarks that today's opponent was the strongest they've encountered so far. Tatsumaki, feeling ignored, can't take it anymore and insults Saitama, calling him a show-off baldy of a B-class hero. Saitama encourages Genos to go educate her, but in the next moment, Tatsumaki slams Saitama into the spaceship. Their fighting abilities are on completely different levels. 
This catastrophe causes A City to vanish completely. The Hero Association turns A City into a steel fortress, with roads extending to quickly connect to other cities. And that's where the first season of One Punch Man ends. So, now we know that Genos' enemy is Metal Knight. Will they have a showdown in the second season? And Saitama hasn't revealed his weakness yet. Will it be uncovered in the next season? I will recap season 2 soon. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.